Hello, welcome to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to be doing the weekly tarot reading for the sign of Libra for the July 8th to July 15th. All right, we're going to get right into it, my lovely Libra, sign of the scales. We're going to pull out your two Oracle Angel cards, Romance Angel cards. Um, for those of you who are just passing by, surfing the web, you happen to land on this video. Um, the drill is that each week I do tarot reading for each of the signs and we look at the major relationship <clears throat> that is taking place that week for you. So whatever is center stage for you um, in terms of uh, the major dynamic, right? It could be a love relationship. It could be dealing with family, friends, uh, could be peers at work, right? Whatever the case may be, whatever the main event is for your life in terms of relationships or dynamics, we're going to try and take a look at it. So, show us the two cards for our lovely Libras for July 8th, 2 to 15th. Show me. All right, Libra, your first card. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations, interesting. And wedding, wow. So, very much wedding now. Your wedding, somebody else's wedding, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Um, I always read from the point of view as you. Today we're reading for Libras, so I'm read I read for Libras when I do my Libra readings. I don't hone in on anyone else around you unless it's in relation to you, right? So this wedding would be something that you're involved in, would be a wedding that you'd be involved in, certainly. And hard to hard conversations as well. So let's see what's going on here. Is it the prospect of one? Is it something that you'd like? All right, it doesn't have to be as literal as that. It could be that just the situation involves marriage, right, in some way or another. So we won't know until we get into your spread. Pull out your seven cards, your main card for the relationship, and then we're going to pull out your three cards for you and three cards for your other person. So it just shows what's going on with our lovely Libras this week, July 8th to the 15th. Show me whatever the main relationship dynamic that they're going to be dealing with this week is taking center stage in their life. Certainly has to do with heart to heart conversations, marriage. Show me. Give me a clear reading for anyone who stopped by to this video today. Whether they're regular or just passing by, we want to give them a clear message, right? Show me. All right, Nibra. King of Swords, Air Energy, this is right up your alley, right? So that's your main card. King of Swords is the great rule maker, the great um, arbitrator, um, the punisher, right? He's the disciplinarian, certainly. Knight of Swords, a lot of air coming in for you. Hermit Energy coming in for your partner. And how you see the relationship is Eight of Swords. So far, a lot of sword activity. Your partner sees themselves as Eight of Cups. They see you as Two of Swords, and they see the relationship as Ten of Cups. Certainly, this requires heart-to-heart -heart conversations. At the bottom of the deck, we have Five of Pentacles. Interesting. So Five of Pentacles is this energy of being sort of abandoned, right? Ousted. Um, let's see. Power struggles, right? Five is the number for power struggle. There was a power struggle and you lost and you were you suffered financially as a result, right? This could be a wedding. This uh, Not a wedding. This could be a divorce, a separation. This could be a power struggle at work over projects, over promotions, you know? This could be a power struggle. This could be two friends living together in an apartment and you have a big fight and you end up having to move out, literally, right? So it is a five of pentacles and oftentimes... When we interpret this card, we forget that this card is very much talking about um, being hurt in such a way that it's leaving you financially worse off. There is a financial consequence to this card. It's not just the abandonment or just the ousting or them turning their back on you. It's that as a result of all of that, you have been poor, you are now financially worse off, poor, right? It's cost you actual coin. 
So at the center of your reading today, Libra, we got King of Swords, right? So this is fire aspect of air energy. Kings are fire, right? And swords are air. So this is sort of your energy in motion, right? That's why the King of Swords is the great disciplinarian. He's the rule maker. He's the one who comes, you come before, he decides who's right, who's wrong, and he, sh and he also dis dishes out the punishment, right? He's stern, he's harsh. He, you know, he comes in and he takes charge. You know, he tells you what to do. This is very masculine energy. Um, this is the person who can like really dominate with his words. He can dominate, you know, uh, you, you know, he, he's, um, powerful, intense. Now it's not gender specific. It doesn't have to be a male, but it is masculine energy, right? And so it's all about getting to the heart of things. It's about being very strict, right? Right now. And certainly it almost seems as though if this is the card for the, for the overall energy in the relationship, it's like, yes, yeah, certainly hard to hard conversations because everybody's, you know, it's like you're kind of uh, having to like answer, right? You're having to answer for things. It's all going to come out. This is a very... A severe kind of energy in as much as um, you have to talk to each other you have to be honest with each other you have to take the lickings that may come with it or whatever the consequences are right right it's accepting the consequences of being honest right no matter how hard the consequences may be or tough they may be right certainly if you imagine this being sort of like a, a cosmic kind of um, you know, disciplinary action or, you know, uh, corrective action, right? There's been too much going on in this relationship. So, Libra, you're coming in seeing yourself as Knight of Swords. So you're seeing yourself as very much in action. You know, you feel like also Knight of Swords is the, is the uh, great protector, right? He comes in. He's the one who stands up to, for the underdog. He comes in a lot of times in terms... The interpretation with Knight of Swords is that somebody is coming in for you who is an air sign. But in actuality, this is <laughs> Knight of Swords is so much deeper than that. Knight of Swords is, is um, air aspect of air. So he, he rides in quick. He comes to people's defense, right? He's a great defender. He's the one who roots for the underdog, right? So when, this, when you see yourself as this energy, you can also be seeing yourself as saving people, coming to the rescue sometimes for certain people, right? Um, when you're in a relationship and you see yourself as the Knight of Swords, you can very much be seeing yourself as the one who's trying to help somebody, save somebody from themselves, right? Save them from themselves with your actions, you know, with your words, right? You're being very, you're trying to, uh, you certainly are, trying to communicate with them you think that you know you think that speaking from the heart and talking heart to heart will save them you are also very quick to kind of cuss anybody else out who gets in the way like i say you are like a protector you know you're like the bodyguard i don't know how many of you have seen the my bodyguard uh, movie for the 80s right it's very much the energy of the kid who, who who was the bodyguard for the younger kid right the smaller kid it was like he was quite um, a gentle giant, but he came in quick, you know. He was like a real kind of protector, right? So the Knight of Swords is that energy as well. And certainly when you see yourself as that, when the Knight of Swords comes up in the position of how you see yourself in a relationship, this is how you see it, right? For, for this relationship, certainly that fits, right? And then, of course, you see your person as, nine of, uh, as nines, major nine. Uh, Major Arcana 9, which is Hermit Energy, right? This is the card for Virgo. But Hermit Energy, this is how you see them. So it's like you see them pulling away a bit, I think. I think you see them kind of um, going inward to themselves, right? Um, you, you know, you feel them being a little bit kind of like solitary, right? So if they're admitting, if you see them as the Hermit, it's almost as if you feel like, um, you know, they're going on kind of like, uh, they're dealing with things without you, right? They may be dealing with something without you. And certainly if you see yourself as the knight in shining armor in a way, as the person who can come to the rescue, who can help them, then, you know, seeing them in this hermit energy must be, must really pull you in because of course, um, you feel like they're having to go through a very difficult journey on their own. And the way you see that, you're seeing it certainly as like you want to be there for them. 
All right. Even though hermit energy requires solitary, being solitary, solitude, right? Hermit energy requires so, requires solitude, right? But looking at it from the outside in, especially if you're a protector, right? If you're a nurturer, if you see yourself in that role, looking from the outside in into somebody who's gone into hermit energy can certainly activate your Florence Nightingale, your desire to come to their rescue. Even though what they're doing requires them to be on their own, requires solitude and solitude right so it's quite interesting um let's go further before i say anything else about the wedding card so the way um the way you see the relationship right oh let me go back here okay i want to i want to go back to this one the eight of cups you see yourself as the great protector right but your person interestingly enough sees themselves as kind of in a position where they want to set up boundaries. They're putting up boundaries. They're putting up walls, right? Um, they feel as though they need to... Um, they are going away. They are kind of pulling away from you, right? I mean, this eight is the number of strengths and weaknesses. It's also a number for putting up boundaries, um, discipline, right? Restrictions that are the amount to discipline. Disciplining yourself, right? Uh, being able to discipline yourself in such a way that you walk away from shallow relationships, you walk away from sh uh, relationships that no longer serve you. You put up boundaries. You have standards now. You're kind of evolving your criteria for what you'll accept in a relationship, right? And through all of that, you see where your strengths are. You see how strong you are by doing this, right? Understanding your strengths and weaknesses is, is, happens when we get into situations that test us. When we get into situations, I'm sorry for the background noise of the siren. If you, when we get in situations that test us or when we make decisions about uh, how we're going to go forward that require discipline, right? Going forward like this requires discipline. It requires restriction. I mean, think about it. If you're the type of person that you generally enjoy going after, like, the crazy one, right? You go out, you go out to bars or restaurants, you socialize, and you're always attracted to the wild one in the room right and this is just a stereotypical this is a stereotype and just a very general example right but you're you're attracted to the wild one or you're attracted to some kind of personality but every time you get involved with that particular type of personality it ends badly it turns you know what i mean you don't do well you don't enjoy the relationship right and you realize that you know you fall for this person for certain reasons but then their true personality, which you know by now because you've been through it enough times, you know, kind of um, so a lot of their behavior and a lot of what their true personality is, is kind of uh, makes you weak, preys on your weaknesses, increases your weaknesses, right? Uh, magnifies your weaknesses, puts you in situations where you feel weaker, right? You don't feel stronger as a result in the long run of being with this person. Yet in the short term you get pulled you get pulled in. You may be excited, you may get turned on, they may have a certain sexual appeal that you can't seem to resist, right? But then being with them is a fucking nightmare. Okay? So it takes a lot of strength then to realize this about yourself and to then put rules in place, boundaries in place, restrictions, standards in place so that you don't fall prey to these type of relationships anymore. And understanding that whole process is what the Eight of Cups is all about right that's what the eight of cups is all about so when you, someone identifies with this energy with this card then that's where they're at they've had it enough they've kind of found their strength in being able to not just fall for the first person that fits the usual profile that in fact is not the profile they need or truly really want right they've learned how to be strong enough to resist that and to wait Maybe be alone, right? Maybe even be alone, but to wait until someone comes along who proves to them to a certain degree or who at least fulfills a certain amount of criteria or standards for them so that they know it's even worth engaging with them. And that's why they're ascending in the robe of red, which is the color of wisdom, with the full light of the moon, right? You, you have the sun, It's nighttime, so the sun is not up, but the sun is reflected fully in the moon, right? This is to suggest that you're getting the full energy of the moon as much as you can see, even though you're in the dark, 
right? And so in his, so what I'm saying is that this person is so wise, he's willing to go forward still in darkness, not knowing what the future holds because he knows or she knows very strongly inside herself what they don't want anymore and that they're strong enough not to fall for that anymore. It's a very powerful card to be when you're talking about relationships and that's how they see themselves, right? When they come to you, they see a two of swords. So a two of swords is the kind of like they feel like they have to make a decision, but they can't make a decision when it comes to you. Something about you or something about uh, uh, being with you, right, or having a life with you causes them to have to choose, feel like they have to choose, right? And interestingly enough, it's like, you see them as pulling away. And no wonder you're seeing them as pulling away. They probably are pulling away because they're not quite sure. Certainly when they see themselves as eight of cups and so now they're kind of like being much more careful who they get involved with and you know why. It's like, they're kind of like, hang on a second. If I'm, in, you know, they see you being, they see you as kind of like something, <clears throat> almost as if, Something like there's a choice that needs to be made, right? Two of Swords. And Two of Swords is interesting because it's like this individual can't make a decision. They're blindfolded and going within because on the surface, they simply can't make a decision, right? Being Seeing you, right, or your energy somehow makes them feel like they have to decide. It could be that they're already involved with someone. Right? It could be that their heart is somewhere else. That somehow your your two energies would make them have to choose between two, right? You know what I'm saying? And them being blindfolded is, is, is like that. It's like when you're in the woods and you're trying to hear something in the woods. And what do you do? You close your eyes, right? You close your eyes when you're trying to hear more. Well, she blindfolds herself and she has the river of her emotions behind her. So certainly the river is there. Um, she hears it. She hears her emotions. She's trying to tap into her emotions and try to see which which sword, right, is the one that she should go with based on her in, her inner feelings, right? Unfortunately, two is not actually about making a decision, but it's about the realization of duality, which is balance, right? And and actuality, there is no decision to be made, but there's balance to be established. Right. In life, we need to balance things, not to choose one over the other. And so two, you know, two coming together, we think of two of cups as the lovers. There's not a choice of one love over the next. You, two, you see a couple, two people coming together. Twos are about duality. It's about coming together. It's about two ones coming together. It's never actually been about a choice. In fact, it's about balance. And so, you know, it could be that part of, you know, part of their, you know, wanting to be with you or their kind of connection with you is learning balance, right? For some reason, you coming into their life is making them feel like they have to make a choice, right? And they're not going to be able to make a choice, right? And they're going to realize they can't, they simply can't, they'll never leave the one or the other alone. This is a scenario like when you're juggling two people, for instance, just an example. This is that type of scenario when you're juggling two people that you realize, um, you know, you're always, this person is always leaving one for the other, leaving the other for the one, because what are they doing? They're making a choice, right? But they can never live with their choice because it's not about a choice, right? They can't live with their choice because they still want the other one. They still desire the other one. They can't get rid of them in their head. And so what they do is they leave and they, they think that their choice is with the other one. Then they go back to the other one. This is one of those scenarios, right? Until they realize that either they balance the two in their lives or they leave them both alone, they won't have any peace. And so this is what I'm talking about. It's that kind of like uh, thing. You know, it'll never work itself out if you, if you try to attack this um, with the strategy of making a decision. Right, because the two have two the two options have too much of a pull on this person. So they're never gonna be able to really properly make a decision. It could be that this individual is juggling you. That they have somebody else, right? And that in their minds it's always about you, them, you, them, you, them. You may not know that because they're pulling away from you. 
right? And so this is why you need to have heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Almost like I said earlier, there's a reckoning coming, King of Swords. Well, now I know why, because I feel like very much like that this person is juggling something else that you may not know about. So now when we get back up to here with you, the way you see the relationship is victim. Eight of, eight of Swords, more eights. So more boundaries need to be set. More, you know what I mean? There's more restrictions, more boundaries happening, more crossing boundaries. Interesting, very interestingly enough. This certainly feels like a three-party energy, like somebody's got another lover or a marriage or some kind of commitment somewhere else that they're not telling you about. But Eight of Swords is my victim card. It's my gaslighting card, right? It's the card where they always make you feel like you're the crazy one. This is the person who's bound and, and they're bound and blindfolded by the restrictions of their own kind of way of thinking, right? They alienate themselves from others with their kind of rigid way of thinking, their rigid opinions. This is the person that you can never talk to. He's the one who comes in a room and nobody can talk to him because his or her opinions are so strong and they, they leave so little room for anybody else to have an opinion that um, nobody ever wants to converse with this person. You know, and then this is the same type of person who'll say, well, nobody likes to talk to me because they don't like the way that I'm so strong with what I'm saying, blah, blah, blah. Or it'll be like, this is the person who's like, you know, well, people don't like to talk to me because they can't handle the truth. No, people don't like to talk to you because you're a dick and you're opinionated and you don't know how to converse with people and leave room for them to have their own opinions, right? That rigid way of thinking that makes you believe that you're so right has alienated people. Right, And this is the type of individual who then says, well, I wouldn't have had to do what I had to do if you didn't act the way you acted. They're the, they're the ultimate gaslighter. They're never responsible for anything. You see how they've tied themselves? It's almost as if, well, I can't move, you know? But no, they've done that to themselves, right? So they're the victim. They play the victim. They play, they gaslight you. You know, they make you feel like it's because of the way you acted that they treated you like shit. <laughs> You know, and you see yourself with this person and it makes you feel like that. They make you constantly feel guilty. They go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with you. And they and they play the victim with you. And and you kind of being the knight in shining armor, you're always, you know, in a way, it's like I feel like maybe that's part of this weird energy here, right? Because they kind of play on your feelings. At least you feel that way. I think you feel this way, right? Unless you're the one who's feeling victimized. Right? Unless you feel like you're the one who's, uh, you know, but I, who, you're the one who's kind of like, if you're the kind of the, the gaslighter, but I can't imagine you being the gaslighter, Libra, because you're the knight in shining armor over here, right? You're out to try to do your best. You're out to try to save this person, right? And I think it's very much more than... You know, as far as the way you see this relationship, it's like you see them as being the victim, but they play the victim with you, right? You may not be aware until now, or you may be coming aware this week that, in fact, it's them really gaslighting you. It's, it's, it may be up until now that you really truly felt that they were a victim, hence you running in, trying to save them. But I think this week you're going to realize, probably through heart-to-heart -heart conversations, that, in fact, they've been playing you the whole time. You know, to a certain degree. They have something to hide. They certainly have been playing the victim. And they've certainly, you know, been gaslighting you to a certain degree. Now, the way they see the relationship is Ten of Cups. It's perfect to them. They don't really see their gaslighting ways. They're kind of, in a way, very... It's interesting here. Eight of Cups, they have this kind of really kind of um, heightened idea of how they want their relationships to go forward, Right? This exalted would be somebody who's very wise about their relationships. But in this scenario, I think it's almost like gone um, with these other energies, right? It's almost as it's gone um, the other extreme in as much as this person is quite snobby about their relationships, right? They're quite judgmental, judgmental right? And they're quite demanding. So rather than this being kind of uh, an internal decision for them to choose better lovers, it's, it's been externalized to a certain degree where they kind of put it on you to be a better lover, a better boyfriend, a better girlfriend. They're always putting it on you, right? 
So they're they're quite demanding of you. They're you know because when we talk about standards and and boundaries and uh, strengths and weaknesses, holding people to their strengths and weaknesses, it's almost as if um, this person is always asking you to come to the plate, come to the plate, come to the plate, do this for me, do that for me, because they see themselves as deserving it, right? They're quite manipulative in that way. And that's the extreme side of this card, because now when you get into how you see this relationship and how they're acting with this two of swords, where I feel like they're juggling probably you and someone else or something they certainly haven't told you. Yet in their minds, they feel like this relationship is a ten of cups. So they're actually they're actually very much bought into this whole life that they're leading. Even if they're cheating on you with somebody else, they don't really see anything wrong with that. I think this person is is quite narcissistic in that way, right? This is somebody who's probably in all other areas quite normal in a way, quite you know like a regular person to be involved with regular kind of stuff, except that they're a complete narcissist because I believe this person has probably got another relationship that they're dealing with or something else that they're juggling or that they're thinking about that they're deciding between you and them, right? They're not being completely honest with you, yet they see being with you ultimately as the, as the, as the final kind of like beautiful outcome for them. So it's like they're really kind of bought into this kind of fantasy. It's like a narcissistic fantasy because they don't see anything wrong with the fact that they're lying to you or that they're keeping this information from you. They feel like they absolutely deserve it, right? Because they're, they're demanding in that way. It's all about what they deserve and demand. So not only do they, you know, they feel like they deserve you, they also deserve whatever else that they've been juggling. If it's another person, they feel exactly the same way about that other person, that they deserve. It's simply that they can't choose, and so they go back and forth, back and forth. Right now, they see you as being the prize. It's quite interesting. That's why wedding is involved. I think very much they may be pushing you towards a wedding. They may be deciding for a wedding. But with these kind of disjointed energies, you have to have the king of swords. A heart-to-heart -heart conversation has to be had. I think this person probably is hinting at wanting to get married or wanting to get closer or wanting to get more committed. They could be using finances as part of their latest kind of manipulation in terms of their latest kind of victim role. Oh, you know, I'm not doing so well with money, you know, right? And so they're looking to you, perhaps, to do, be more committed, which would then turn out as, because Ten of Cups is not only being more committed, but it's having bounty and abundance because you're together. The, you know, it's the abundance of the unit. So they certainly are kind of praying on, you know, playing on the fact that, you know, hey, I'm not doing so well. If you could help me out. Oh, here's the bright idea they came up with. There you go. And there's Ten of Pentacles, right? So if you could just help me out, maybe if we could live together we could save money, right? But again, you see them as pulling away. You see them as going, going not, not, really, not really being as present as you'd like them to be, right? Because this is your card for them. So it's funny. It's like even though they're very kind of like forward and demanding... Right? They're very demanding, but there's something that they're holding back. And that's the thing that they're constantly thinking about and juggling, which you don't know quite really what it is. I wouldn't have been surprised if Moon will come out. So King of Swords is the great reckoner. He's the one you can't, you know, you come before him and he cuts you down, right? And he also takes uh, punitive, you know, measures or whatever, right? He makes, he does the punishment. He meets out the punishment, you know. He's he's the the rule maker, right? He's the he's the one who decides if you've broken the rules. He's not the, we're not talking about king of pentacles or pa or wands or cups here. King of swords is is that man, right? So that's what it that's what it means by I think that's why he's coming out certainly with heart to our conversations cuz it's time for you to have a talk with this person and get all this shit out and open. It's time for them to really explain why they're pulling away from you, what's really going on. You know what I mean? It's also time for you to kind of get to the bottom of some of this demanding behavior if you're sick of that, you know. But this is the week for it. 
certainly because I think these conversations are going to have to come up this week. Um, it's coming through, you know, this is the reading for this week for you, Libra, and I'm going to call it. This is July 8th to the 15th for you, Libras. Um, yeah, this is a week of having a conversation, certainly. It's time to get to the bottom of what this disjointed energy is with this person and why it just seems like in all ways they're quite okay, but in other ways it seems like they're just quite, you know, just quite off the wall, you know what I'm saying? So if this resonates with you, please like, subscribe, comment below. All right. Um, if you are just passing through and this resonated with you, why don't you subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified of all my videos. Every week we do this. All right. So for right now, I'm just going to tell you Libras have a wonderful, wonderful week, July 8th to 15th. See you next week. Bye.